And a surge at the border, migrants trying to cross into the U.S. in masses and the situation at the border now reaching a tipping point. Joining us this morning to talk about border security, Congressman Tony Gonzalez represents part of San Antonio, a large part of the border, including uh, the El Paso area where uh, President Biden was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, good morning, Congressman. Good to have you here with yeah, us. Yeah, good morning. Great to see you again. And uh, speaking of that, I know you've been pretty vocal after that tour by President Biden. Uh, you felt snubbed that you weren't invited, especially that this is the area that you represent. Have you heard from the Biden administration since? We've talked a reason? little bit. Uh, the, the, you know, our staffs have worked together. But that, this was the frustrating part was there's nothing partisan about this border crisis. Everybody's impacted. And, and it really showed that the president was looking at it through a political lens and not a bipartisan lens. Words are only, every, anyone can say words, actions is what it really matters. So I look forward to working with the administration and anyone else that I, wants to solve the border crisis. Why do you think your visit was so important to that area with the president? Uh, because it shows that Congress and the White House can work together. Right now we have divided government. A lot of people are concerned, you know, what are House Republicans gonna do? What are the White House gonna do? Everyone's kind of building, digging their, 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 uh, their trenches it's not, that's not how divided government works, so let's we need to come together. Let's talk about Title 42. Of course, it, sure. it, it makes it a way you can expel asylum speakers over COVID. Yeah. Uh, the administration is going to end it, Supreme Court. It's, it's gone back and forth, but now uh, the White House said it's going to extend the policy to expel migrants from Haiti, Cuba, and Nicaragua, uh, Nicaragua, and then allow a legal pathway you know, for them as well. Uh, do you support it, or do you think it, it needs to end? Yeah, no, there's a lot of things that has to, that, that need to be improved, but this is what happens, Barry, is people confuse immigration with border security. These are two separate things. I've been of the mindset you can be for strong uh, border package, border security package that prevents bad actors from entering the country, and you can also be warm and welcoming to those that want to come and live the American dream. And this is where the administration is blending the two. House Republicans do the same thing. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a bill. It's called the, the Border Safety and Security Act. Sounds great. Sounds like it talks about border. In reality, it is a bill that bans all asylum claims to include legitimate asylum claims. So these are issues that, that don't uh, secure the border one bit. I'll give you an example. You know, uh, uh, when Afghanistan happened, there was an Afghan family, Afghani family that reached out to me. We helped get them back to San Antonio. This, if this law, this Border Safety and Security Act was in place, that family wouldn't be allowed to come into the United States. Guess what this family is doing now? This gentleman works at San Antonio Shoes. His daughter had, uh, had cancer. It's now in, in remittance. And the family's doing great. Like, this is part of the American story. The Im immigration system's absolutely broken, but abolishing it, uh, abolishing all asylum claims is not the way to do it. I know you've been a big advocate uh, for Border Patrol and local, state, and federal law enforcement to work together. And it was just last week that you filed a bill of your own. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why it is important for you? I did. I filed the, uh, sec the Security First Act. And, and essentially what it does is that it gives more resources to sheriffs and, and local uh, law enforcement. That's important. And it adds some teeth to the equation. It, 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 it labels cartels as terrorist organizations. This, I think, is important. Yesterday was one of my most, most rewarding days in Congress. Uh, we reopened the Catula Border Patrol Station. It's about an hour and a half from here, about an hour from the border, and there were 96 agents. So now 96 agents are no longer in the processing center. They're back out in the field stopping bad actors. Okay, also, I um, want to touch up on uh, El Paso Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, because she said she believes the problems uh, at the border are Congress's fault. So the question is, how are you working with your colleagues there? She's to get right. Things working. Yeah, she's right. It's everybody's fault. And what you see in politics is everyone just blames each other but themselves. She is absolutely right. Congress has a role to play, and it starts with us having the conversation. You, you won't believe how difficult it is just to sit down and have a conversation. You know, you can be on different ends of the spectrum, but we all want a safe community. We all want this American dream that, that, that welcomes those through the front door. Then, you know, folks having to be smuggled and, and hidden, all these different things is dangerous to everybody. So Real Congress quick, does have to do a better job. Real quick, Tony the issue with the, the Biden papers. There need to be an investigation. We've got to do this quick. 100%. I, I retired out of NSA Texas here, top secret clearance my whole life. We have to hold people accountable for, for classified information, whether you're the president or whether you're anyone. Like right. We have to hold them responsible. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Yeah, Congressman we're out of time. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you.